SpaceX Starship Updates and Crew Dragon Demo Mission 2 has an official date. My name is Felix and I am your host for today's episode of What About It? And as always there has been a lot going on in the space industry lately, so let's take right off. Starship Updates SpaceX right now is in full preparation to get Starship Serial Number 4 out the door and to correct an error they made with the last test candidate. A human mistake resulting in the total destruction of Serial Number 3. But before Serial Number 4 could do its job, the launch site needed repairs and upgrades. We're talking about SpaceX here though. In Boca Chica, progress is fast everywhere. Throughout the whole weekend, the SpaceX crew worked tirelessly to repair systems and replace the large hydraulic press support structure within the launch mount. The old one got damaged during the last test failure, so a new one was needed. For those who do not know, this part is temporary. Once tank sections do not need to do cryogenic pressure tests anymore, SpaceX won't need it anymore. It is there to hold three large hydraulic presses up. These presses in return push against the thrust puck underneath the tank section while the cryogenic tests are conducted. All this is done to simulate the pressure the engines would inflict on the thrust structure in a flight. Three Raptor engines produce an immense thrust output. And so the support structure for the hydraulic presses has to be very sturdy to withstand these kinds of forces. Now that the part had been replaced, the launch mount was ready for another test run. One thing was still missing though. And here it comes. The part still missing on serial number 4 was rolled out to the high bay late last week. The brand new thrust section. By now very complex, it still only took SpaceX a few days to build it, partly because they reused the skirt from serial number 3. With these construction times, not only we rocket enthusiasts are studying these pictures carefully. The whole industry will be watching right now. Carefully examining what exactly SpaceX is doing and if it actually could work. If this construction method can produce reliable spacecraft, it will be a paradigm shift in the industry. With traditional methods, such short production times could never be achieved. And so everyone who wants to still be part of the race will have to rethink how to build rockets. Moved into the high bay and lifted onto a jig, the serial number 4 thrust section was ready for the stack. And this stack came right away. The crew building a possible future of space travel never stands still it seems. Perfectly executed again and like a clockwork, the tank section was lifted on top of the thrust section and lowered down to be welded in place. That's it. Serial number 4 is stacked and ready for the rollout. And the rollout should actually be happening today if it hasn't happened already. Follow me on Twitter, I'll be tweeting as soon as I see something happening. So we have new road closure dates. Today, as said, is likely for the rollout of serial number 4 to the launch site. Then we have a primary closure date on April 23rd. This most likely is our next cryogenic test date, hopefully not to make us cry this time. And last but not least, we have another primary test date on April 26th, with secondary dates on the 27th and the 28th. Primary dates followed by secondary dates might be an indicator for test launch activities as the weather could make a shift necessary and so backup dates are issued. Last time SpaceX planned a static fire and then the 150 meter launch for serial number 3, so it is very likely that this is still the plan. First though, we'll have to get past the 23rd and anyone who follows my episodes closely knows what that means. It's kind of like a great filter. No starship has ever been able to pass the cryogenic test. If it happens though, we're in for a treat and you can be very sure that I'll be streaming any static fires or hop attempts if at all possible. Last but not least, Musk has been very busy on Twitter again, giving out more details about where we are at with the Starship program and what we can expect in the future. First of all, he confirmed my prediction that SpaceX should be around 26 to 27 Raptor engines by now. We're at serial number 26 right now. It's hard to tell how many of those are actually flight worthy, but if most of them are, we'd be closing in on the 37 engines needed for a super heavy booster. Of course, SpaceX will need a few of them for Starship testing and it's likely that not all of them are meeting SpaceX's standards for a test candidate, but still, this is rather promising. Musk has also talked about future improvements on Starships. Eric Berger from Teslarati tweeted about SpaceX's progress in the last decade. 
And what SpaceX has done in the last decade is pretty impressive, right? Elon Musk though replied that even this was not fast enough. Considering that SpaceX started 18 years ago, getting a man into space in 18 years from nothing was too slow in his opinion. He also talked about what the next improvements to expect on Starship prototypes would be. He said that flaps, actuators and static aerodynamics surfaces are undergoing redesigns for mass reduction and simplicity compared to what we saw at the Starship presentation back in 2019. Rule number one, the best part is no part. He also said that these changes will look similar to what we already know, but seemingly small changes could have surprisingly big effects. Starships will be doing controlled falling through the sky rather than actual flying. This seems to require some rather unintuitive design work on aerodynamic body parts. He also said when we could expect these design changes to be implemented. Serial number 5. And remember in this conversation he was talking about fins and other aerodynamic surfaces. So it's likely that serial number 5 will have a nose and fins. So we'll likely not only see a flying tank section after serial number 4, but instead a full starship. Maybe, just maybe, even a belly flop maneuver. And do you know what this is? Well, most of you will know that this is a top dome stacked with rings. But it's not for serial number 4. This one is the beginning of serial number 5. Where serial number 4 was not even at the launch site yet, SpaceX was already stacking serial number 5. And the reason can be found in Elon's tweet. If he wants to add fins and a nose cone to Starship Serial No. 5, the SpaceX team in Boca Chica will have a long build time. So as soon as Serial No. 4 is out of the high bay, SpaceX will immediately start with the next Starship prototype and this time it will look like what we saw at the presentation. Or at least very similar to it with better build quality and actually made for a flight. He also said that the oxygen header tank in the nose tip will stay, as it is important to keep the center of mass as high up as possible for atmospheric re-entry. Even the crude version will have this header tank. Since it is very small though, it won't be a problem. I know, I know, this is all super exciting again and we all want this to happen, but don't forget that there is a cryogenic test ahead first. Let's keep our fingers crossed that the gremlins stay away this time and that SpaceX actually gets to the point of installing engines for the first time since the hopper flight in 2019. Crew Dragon Demo 2 has an official date. From Starship construction to a crewed mission to the ISS, all in one episode. There's only one company in the entire world that could make these kinds of news and they are very close to their next big milestone now. We can say many things about the global effort of space exploration. How it's a team effort and how it could not be done without every single nation involved pitching in and anyone saying so is absolutely correct. One thing is true though. These doors at Kennedy Space Center are famous and for a good reason. Many very important missions were started on American soil and it's a thing to be proud of. And that's what NASA is showing with their hashtag Launch America campaign right now. The date for that first flight after so many years without any crewed flights from Kennedy Space Center has been officially announced. Get out your calendars and make a big red X on May 27th. That's it. The day many have been waiting for. The day that Bob Beanken and Doug Hurley step through that door right to Pad 39A in their Teslas and get into their brand new Crew Dragon capsule. You might notice by how I'm saying this that I am just a tiny bit pumped about all this. SpaceX is sending astronauts to the ISS. This is the last step in becoming absolutely equal to any other big player in the business. In just 12 years SpaceX achieved it all. The first privately funded rocket to reach orbit with Falcon 1 on September 28, 2008. The first privately funded company to successfully launch a spacecraft into orbit and recover it on December 9, 2010. The first private company to send a spacecraft to the International Space Station on May 25, 2012. The first private company to send a satellite into geosynchronous orbit on December 3, 2013. The first private company to send a probe beyond Earth orbit on February 11, 2015. The first landing of the first stage of an orbital rocket on December 21st the same year. And finally the first water landing of an orbital rocket on April 8, 2016. And now the first private company to send astronauts into low Earth orbit on May 27th of 2020. 
It's hard to imagine how this list will continue into the future. But it's safe to say that this is not the end of the achievements of an incredible company that appeared out of nothing and that no one would have thought to be even possible in the first place. If you haven't watched it yet, make sure to check out part 2 of my recently published conversation with Robert Zubrin. Amongst other things, it tackles the question how Elon is able to do these things and what motivates him to go further. So this wraps up today's episode of What About It? Will serial number 4 finally pass the cryogenic test and pave the way for the first Starship flight in human history? And are you as excited about Demo Mission 2 as I am? As always, tell me in the comments. Here we are again at the Patreon and YouTube member shoutout. For the past few episodes this was a bit crazy as there have been so many out there willing to support the cause. It's a humbling feeling every time and I'll never get rid of the strange feeling I get when I see more and more arrive on our Discord. There are no words that would fit what I want to say to these people. It's incredible, unbelievable and it helps the channel so much. So show your love for these people in the comments and maybe even consider becoming one yourself. They provide the means to create what you see twice a week. And as on every single episode there are new members in the Y family. Everyone, please give a warm welcome to F. Allen 46, Bob Brink, Hussein Court, Robert Dr. Brown, Marco Makuch, Alex, Scott Venebel, Mike Truder, the North Houston Space Society, and many others. You rock! Thank you for watching this episode of What About It? And now would be the appropriate time to hit the like button, subscribe, and don't forget to hit the bell button to actually receive a notification when I do my uploads. It's a version of support that doesn't cost a penny and it does help me to produce more and better content. And if you do want to spend your money, consider becoming a patron and get insights into the production of What About It and chat with me on the Discord. Or you could buy yourself a new shirt on our merchandise store and look like me. There are plenty original designs available in good quality for a low price made by a space nerd for other space nerds. It all helps me to give you the latest and greatest about space and science. I hope to see you on the next episode. Until then, have a great time. Put and so this is that's a and so the decade or decade in the last decade in the last decade. So show your love for them in the pit in the pit in the Y family. No. Star starships starship.